A while ago we talked about Fourier transforms, which basically allow us to distinguish exact frequencies of waves in real space by moving to frequency space. I encourage you to check out that video if you haven't already, the link will be in the description. The problem is that that video left at a bit of a cliffhanger. We said that nearly all Fourier transforms are executed in code, but even though discrete Fourier transforms can be directly implemented, they are incredibly slow. The question now is, can we make the discrete Fourier transform fast? And the answer is yes, with a fast Fourier transform, or FFT, using, for example, the cooley tukey algorithm. Now, here's a bit of a problem. The discrete Fourier transform is defined by this formula, which requires a sum over all real or imaginary space. This means if we're going to play any tricks, we have to be careful not to miss any elements. So here's what we do. Imagine we have an array with eight elements in it. The first step is to strategically shuffle our elements, and this can be done in a number of different ways. One way is to simply recursively split all the even and odd elements over and over again and concatenate the array at the end. Another method uses bit reverse ordering. Here we write out the bit strings for every number and flip them, swapping the appropriate elements afterwards. Depending on the language, one of these methods might be easier to implement than the other. Regardless, next is the tricky part, combining all of these elements back together. To visualize this step, most people use a butterfly diagram, which basically shows the flow of data with time. The idea is somewhat straightforward. For the first iteration, we combine pairs of elements together. The second iteration, we combine pairs of pairs. And in the third iteration, we combine pairs of pairs of pairs. Each combination is of course called a butterfly because it looks like an hourglass. In addition, each butterfly is a small discrete Fourier transform that avoids unnecessary matrix multiplications and summation. Instead of eight sums, here we only need seven weaker butterflies. As the system size gets larger, it becomes less logical to even consider using a discrete Fourier transform because the FFT will simply be much, much faster. Now let's look at the simplest butterfly and describe what it mathematically represents. Again, it's a mini discrete Fourier transform, so we're going to need an array of the e to the 2 pi i k terms, which we'll define as omega. Quantitatively, this butterfly says that b0 equals a0 plus omega naught a1, and b1 equals a0 plus omega 1 a1. It seems simple enough, but there's a trick here that nearly everyone plays that took me weeks to figure out. Like I said, we're going to need an array of these omega values. But it turns out that the second half of this array will always be equal to the negative of the first half of this array. So we can save RAM by simply using half of the array of omega values. In this case, we simply need to change omega 1 to negative omega naught. Throughout most of the literature, you'll see this trick played, and it's not really properly described anywhere. So here is the butterfly diagram again with all the appropriate omega values placed in. Ultimately, the power of the FFT cannot be understated. It's used in pretty much every area of research and has made previously impossible problems possible. As before, the cooley tukey algorithm is up on the Algorithm Archive and is awaiting language-specific implementation. Thanks again to all of these people for helping with the archive so far. Also, before you go, I wanted to thank you again for watching. We recently hit 1 million channel views and 2 to the 13 subscribers, which is absolutely crazy to me. Seriously, you guys rock. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Toodles.